Hey guys, it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another What I Ate in a Day video. So today I'm going to show you guys everything I ate yesterday. And yesterday I was very sick. <laughs> today I'm still a little bit sick, although I am feeling better. But yesterday I was not, there's no way I was going to get in front of the camera yesterday, but I was filming what I ate yesterday. So this video is going to be kind of like what I ate on a sick day video, although that's not what I was planning on filming. I was just planning on filming a what I ate in a day video, but it became a sick day. So you know, you just gotta roll with it. But I did have an appetite, which is very good. I had very strong appetite, actually. So I still ate a lot of good food, stuff you can still eat even when you're not sick. So hopefully this is helpful for you. My main focus yesterday was kind of mainly eating, you know, comforting, healthy food that'll still help me feel better. Yeah, just food I wanted to eat that still was mostly healthy. And that was like my goal. And I was like pretty hungry all day to be honest. And today's video is very kindly sponsored by Bydeem, which is a company that is dedicated to creating high quality, stylish, and thoughtful kitchen appliances. Specifically in this video, I'll be using the Bydeem Intelligent Electric Food Steamer, which I was super excited to try out because I've never had an electric food steamer. And I think it would be a really fantastic gift for Mother's Day. Actually, they have a lot of appliances on their website that are absolutely gorgeous that I think would make awesome gifts for Mother's Day. So if you are still looking for a gift, then this is something you might want to consider. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about the steamer later on, but let's just get started and see how I started my day, what I had for breakfast. Let's go. <laughs> All right, friends, let's flash back to the day before. Here's me looking much better than I actually did look <laughs> yesterday <laughs> because I was actually contemplating on filming the intro and stuff, but I was like, I was feeling too sorry for myself, so I didn't. Anyways, here is me making breakfast. So I was honestly craving instant noodles, so I'm gonna make that, but I also wanted some other things, cause you know me, I like to have variety. And I thought now that I have a steamer, I'm gonna make steamed dumplings. It's actually one of my favorite things. I know a lot of people, you know, fry their dumplings or pan fry, but I actually really like, I mean, I like fried dumplings too, but I actually love steamed dumplings as well. So I'm making steamed dumplings and also a steamed bun, which is filled with red bean, which is like a Korean slash Asian thing. And also I'm making some broccoli as well. We're just gonna steam that all together for 10 minutes. And while that was steaming, I decided to make my instant noodles. Okay, I know it's not the healthiest thing, but I was craving like, you know, a hot spicy soup. And you know what? It was fine. It was great. It was my it was my decision and it was a great decision. Okay. <laughs> I was craving it. Anyways, I'm cooking up the noodles and of course I wanted to add some protein, so I'm going to add some soft tofu in there as well. And I also like to add some green onions into my instant noodles and of course you just cook that for about 5 minutes and then it's pretty much ready. And then let's check up on our steamed goodness. So here it is. We have finished steaming the dumplings, the steamed buns, and of course broccoli. And everything was steamed to perfection and I was so excited to eat these dumplings. Oh my god. And I know a lot of you guys are probably like, how are you eating this much food? <laughs> when you're sick and I actually had to google I was like is it normal to eat lots when you are sick <laughs> and it turns out there's a saying I've never heard the saying but apparently there's a saying that says feed a cold starve a flu or something like this have you guys heard this anyways I was like cool I have a cold so I'm good it's cool anyways here's me enjoying everything honestly no regrets everything was so good you know I think it was a pretty balanced meal to be honest we got a hot soup, we got some good carbs, maybe not good carbs, but we got some carbs, you know, we got some delicious dumplings, we have some protein from the tofu, we got some vegetables from the broccoli, I mean, come on, it was a great meal. So after my breakfast, I had my uh, steamed bun. I actually saved that for dessert because it's actually sweet. So in the inside, it's actually filled with sweetened red bean paste, which is a very common ingredient in Asian desserts. And it's actually really good in my opinion. And these steamed buns are so, so good. And it's the perfect thing to put into the steamer. I'm so excited to use the steamer for steamed buns, especially. So yeah, anyways, on the side, I also had a little bit of this like green juice thing that I bought the day before when I was starting to feel a little bit sick. So that's also part of my dessert. It's funny because I was already planning on filming this video, but I was not planning on 
being sick, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it was just gonna be a regular what I ate in a day video, like healthy recipes, you know, but it just kind of like worked out a little bit weirdly because obviously with the steamer, you know, you're making healthy food. It's kind of perfect for like when you're sick. <laughs> If you guys didn't know, steaming is actually one of the healthiest ways of cooking because it actually retains a lot of the nutrients of the food as well as the freshness. And of course, a lot of different types of foods can be steamed. And I just know that with this new steamer from Bydeem, I'm definitely gonna be steaming my food more often and um, it's just gonna make it so much easier for me. This thing is an all-in-one intelligent steamer and it does steaming, disinfecting, slow cooking, it cooks rice and congee, and you can also make yogurt and also baby food. It's very very versatile and you can make a lot of different things and it's really easy to use without much fuss. I also love that it's actually aesthetically pleasing like it's not ugly. <laughs> It's actually really cute. I think it looks really, really like chic and modern on the counter. I don't know what do you guys think. I think it looks really cute. And I also like that it's very lightweight and compact. So I can actually keep it on my counter without it taking up way too much space. And if you want to store it somewhere, it's also easy to store because it's not so bulky and big. For me, I want to keep it on my counter because I'm a lot more likely to use it more often if it's on my counter. So if you guys are interested in getting the Bydeem Intelligent Electric Food Steamer, make sure you check out the link down below to get you or a loved one one of these. And of course, you can feel free to browse their website because they've got a ton of beautiful kitchen appliances. Thank you so much to Bydeem for sponsoring today's video. But of course, thank you to you guys as well for watching and supporting my channel. Now back to the video. So for lunch, I wanted to make everyone's favorite sick day food. Well, every Asian person's favorite sick day food, which is congee or rice porridge. So I am making rice porridge using the steamer. So I'm using these stew pots, these glass stew pots, which you can actually put into the steamer and it just cooks food in this little pot. It's so cool. Anyway, I added a little bit of dry white rice and I probably should have rinsed this, but I forgot because I was sick. <laughs> That's my excuse. Anyways, I'm also going to add in some mushrooms because I thought that would go really well with the kanji. So I'm just going to chop up some mushroom. And I had a little bit of garlic left, so I'm also going to mince some garlic. We're going to add that in there as well. And if I had some fresh ginger, I would have added some fresh grated ginger. That's one of my favorite things in kanji, but I did not have it. And then I added some water and I didn't measure my water and I didn't really measure anything. I just kind of added enough water to fill it up to the top, but also not so much that I couldn't close the lid. And then I brought it to the steamer and I actually have an extra steaming rack, which is so convenient. I highly recommend it because you can steam multiple things at once. So I'm also going to steam some sweet potatoes that I've been meaning to cook up for a while. So yeah, super convenient. I'm going to cook that up. The sweet potatoes only took about 40 minutes in total to steam. So I actually cooked the sweet potatoes first and took those out first and let the kanji cook longer, which I think the kanji took at least an hour, maybe a little bit longer. It just kind of depends on what sort of consistency you want. So whilst everything was steaming, I made myself some tea because, you know, you got to drink tea when you're sick. It's part of the rules, okay? So I made myself some tea. So after the sweet potatoes were done, I took those out of the steamer and I actually wanted to make myself something else to go with the kanji. So I'm actually cutting up the rest of the soft tofu and I wanted to steam the soft tofu with some baby bok choy. So I'm just going to add those onto the ceramic plate that comes with the steamer and then I wanted to make a sauce to go with it. For the really quick and easy sauce, I'm just eyeballing everything into a small bowl. I'm going to add some soy sauce along with some mirin, which is a Japanese sweet cooking wine. And we're also going to add some rice vinegar. If you don't have mirin, you can just use extra rice vinegar. And I also added in a sweetener, which is agave nectar. You can also use maple syrup. And I'm also going to add a little bit of kuchukaru, which is Korean red chili pepper flakes. And that part is super optional. So I'm just going to mix that together. And then I just poured everything on top of the bok choy and the tofu and then I steamed it so I steamed the tofu and vegetables for about 10 minutes and while we are waiting for that to cook I'm just gonna put away some of the sweet potatoes that we steamed and of course I'm gonna eat some as well sweet potatoes are really good to steam in advance and just like put it in the fridge and eat it later so that's what I'm doing but of course I'm having a little piece along with this like green juice thing that's just sweet juice but it's good <laughs> And after 10 minutes, the tofu bok choy dish was finished. And as you can see, it released a lot of water during the cooking process. Next time, I might try steaming first and then adding the sauce after. So 
we'll try we'll try a lot of things anyways here's the kanji oh my god i was so impressed with the kanji it was basically kanji <laughs> what can i say basically very very mushy rice which is basically what you want it soaked up all of that water next time i might add less rice and more water so that it becomes more liquidy which is the kind of kanji that i really like but overall it worked perfectly and i didn't really have to do anything which is amazing anyways on top of my kanji i like to add soy sauce some sesame oil some ground ginger and lots of green onions so that's what i'm doing here and then on top of the soft tofu and bok choy i'm just adding in some sesame seeds and there is my lunch and let me just tell you that this is literally the perfect sick day food <laughs> I feel like this was the perfect sick day meal. Not only am I eating kanji, which is very easy to digest. This is basically the Asian version of like chicken noodle soup, okay? Yeah, mushy rice, very easy to digest, very easy to eat, very comforting as well when you're sick, especially when you don't have an appetite. It's just easy to eat. And then we've got the soft tofu, which again, very easy to eat. It's very soft, not too much chewing involved, but you're also getting in that protein to make you feel fuller and, you know, all those good things. And of course, you want to eat some vegetables, baby bok choy, fantastic. This was so good. I would eat this even if I wasn't sick, but especially if you're sick, I think it's a perfect meal. And after lunch, I did a lot of moping around, feeling sorry for myself, doing very much nothing. And now we're ready to make dinner and i actually tried making this the night before and i really enjoyed this so we're doing it again and showing you guys so once again we are using tofu we're also using mushrooms seems to be a theme in today's video basically i'm making a steamed version of my air fryer spring rolls but in dumpling form if that makes sense so i'm chopping up some mushrooms some green onion and we're gonna go to the pan spray a little bit of oil So as you've seen, I sauteed some green onion along with the mushroom and then on one side of the pan, I am crumbling up some extra firm tofu. So in my air fryer spring rolls recipe, I used soy curls, but you can also use tofu. So I'm actually using tofu this time. So I'm just going to cook that up a little bit and then we mix everything together. And we're basically just kind of cooking this for a little bit, allowing a lot of the water to evaporate. And to season, I'm adding some soy sauce, mirin, rice vinegar, and garlic powder, and then just mix that really well. And if you guys want the recipe for this, it'll be linked down below. It'll be basically the same thing as the air fryer spring rolls recipe with just a few tweaks. So check that out. So to make these dumplings, I'm just taking some rice paper. We're just going to soak it in some warm water to soften. And then we can add in the filling, which we just made. And then we can just fold it however way you want. I just fold it a really easy way, just from bottom and then just fold it and then the sides and then just roll it kind of like I'm making spring rolls. And once we have rolled all of these or made these, I am going to take that ceramic plate again. I'm going to add a little bit of oil on top of it uh, so that the spring rolls are less likely to stick on the plate. Now, it still does stick on the plate. I feel like rice paper, it's just very sticky by nature. But um, I mean, it's stuck less on the plate. So next time I might have like a little bed of cabbage and then put the dumplings on top. That's what I was thinking. Anyways, we're going to stick this into the steamer once again, and then we're just going to do 10 minutes in the steamer. In the meantime, I'm going to make a sauce. It's going to be basically the same sauce as before. <laughs> Some soy sauce, rice vinegar, and we're going to add a little bit of kochukaru again, which is a Korean red chili pepper powder or flakes. Then we're just going to mix that. That's going to be like a dipping sauce or a sauce that you pour on top. So I wanted to make another soup because I was craving it again, but this time I wanted to make it super healthy. So into a pot, I have some water. I'm going to add some dry kelp and some wakame seaweed, and that's going to help flavor the broth into like a really nice, deep umami flavor. And I actually boil that on medium heat for about 15 minutes to allow that flavor to really soak in. And then I'm going to add some baby bok choy along with a little bit of soup soy sauce, also known as kukkanjang. 
That's a soy sauce that Korean people use specifically for soup. You can use regular soy sauce or salt, or you can even use a vegetable broth as a base instead of water. Anyways, I also added in some soft tofu along with a ton of baby spinach because I wanted to get in as many nutrients as possible into this pot. And I know it looks like the spinach is overflowing, but let's face it, we all know it's gonna turn into absolutely nothing very soon, so don't worry. And I'm making this into a miso soup, so I'm actually taking some spoonfuls of the broth into a bowl, and then I'm gonna mix in the miso paste with that to thin out the miso paste, so when we add it into the broth, it's not gonna have like chunks of miso in there. So that's what I'm doing here. So once everything is pretty much cooked, I'm going to add some chopped green onion and then I'm going to turn off the heat and then we're going to add in the miso paste and simply mix that in and there is your delicious miso soup. Now the reason why we add the miso soup after everything is cooked is because we don't want to boil the miso paste because apparently when you boil it, it kills the probiotics and potentially other nutrients that are in the miso paste, which is basically what you want. So yeah, that's why we add it in at the very end. I used to like not think it was a big deal, but now I added it in at the end guys and this was so good, okay? So, so good. And after 10 minutes, this is what the dumplings look like. They don't look the prettiest, okay? I'm not gonna lie, but I swear these are so good. And although I do like these air fried as well, again, steaming them creates a different sort of experience. And I feel like the outside, like the rice paper gets really nice and like chewy and it's so good. So I'm having that with the side of the miso soup and I'm just gonna pour that sauce on top of the uh, dumplings. And I'm just gonna eat this with the spoon and like chopsticks because it does break apart pretty easily so i would recommend just eating it like with a spoon and fork or something it's just easier to eat it that way and it is so so good And after dinner, I ate half an orange because you know what they say about vitamin C when you are sick. So I ate half an orange. And then I took a lovely bubble bath because I felt like I needed to like sweat it out or something, you know? We got some essential oils going, we got some candles going, and I just took a nice bath. I only lasted about 15 minutes. <laughs> Is it just me or like you can't last long in a bath? Let me know. <laughs> but still, it was nice. It felt very, very nice and soothing. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much it for what I ate in a day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If there's any recipes that I think would be relevant, they'll be linked down below, of course. So don't forget to check that out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. And of course, don't forget to check out Bydeem Intelligent Electric Food Steamer, which will be linked down below. Thank you so much to Bydeem for sponsoring today's video. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, you guys. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!